There are some timeless tips that help you make the most of your Disney World vacation, but today we are pushing the envelope for those super secret tips only Disney diehards know about. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Yep, it's super important to make your Fast Pass Plus reservations as soon as your booking window opens, pack your comfy shoes, and take advantage of the times that the parks are typically the least crowded. But taking advantage of some lesser known tricks can kick up your Disney World vacation another notch. We've got those for you today. Here are seven new tricks that only Disney pros know. And yes, I am clapping under my desk as I emphasize this. First up, screenshot everything. Every aspect of your Disney trip is super conveniently stored and organized right within the My Disney Experience app, but what happens when your phone dies or the app glitches out or the Wi-Fi is awful and you can't access any of your fast passes or dining reservations? Screenshot it, my friends. We'd also recommend keeping a hard printed copy of your itinerary and print out confirmation of those big ticket fast passes you got up at 5 a.m. to book just in case your phone dies or you're having some kind of tech malfunction that isn't on the app side of things. Now, we recommend keeping screenshots of your fast passes and dining reservations in your camera roll, just in case there are any problems with the Wi-Fi or your cell data and you need to show a cast member. This is especially true if you've made a last minute dining reservation in the My Disney Experience app. It takes a bit for Disney system to load the new reservations for the cast members at the podium, so you'll likely need to show them a reservation number if you just snagged that ADR an hour ago. The other time you want to make sure you're screenshotting everything is when you're trying to get a Rise of the Resistance boarding pass over there in Hollywood Studios. Now a cast member won't be able to help out if you got Group 98 because it took too long to load. Seriously, everyone in the park is gunning for the same thing at the same time. Somebody's going to draw the short straw. But if you have a legitimate glitch, like the app isn't registering that your party is in the park, but you were totally in the park 30 minutes before it opened, make sure you screenshot that error message. The screenshot will show the error and the time you were trying for a boarding group, which will help a cast member help you. Next new trick only the pros know, getting help from the guest experience team. If you've been to Disney World recently, you might have noticed blue umbrellas throughout the parks that say guest experience. You can find guest experience locations throughout all four of the parks and the cast members there can help you out with some of the most common questions and concerns that guests run into without you having to go all the way back to guest relations. Yep, instead of making that huge walk all the way back to guest relations at the front of the park, you can swing by the closest guest experience spot for assistance. It's awesome. I don't know why Disney hasn't done this before. These cast members can help out with questions about wait times, Fast Pass Plus information, dining information, park tours, lost and found, lost guest retrieval, and general assistance. You'll also be able to stop by a guest experience kiosk to get some help with those Rise of the Resistance boarding passes if you have any glitches. Make sure you screenshotted them. The guest experience location are listed in the My Disney Experience app, so if you find yourself in need of help, just open the map and search for the nearest kiosk. Next trick only the pros know, where to stand to be the first on the ride. You can always tell who the pros are when you get to the stretching room in the Haunted Mansion. They're not walking in looking up at the portraits in wonder. They're making a beeline straight towards the back wall, but why? Once that haunted room stretches, one of the walls becomes a door, and that leads you to the ride itself. If you aren't close to that door, you'll end up in the throng of people trying to wind their way into the narrow queue line. Want to be the first out of the stretching room? Stand under the portrait of the girl with the parasol. That's where the door is in every single stretching room. Other rides with a pre-show element follow the same concept. If you're a Disney pro, you've seen the film Before Dinosaur a thousand times, so instead head towards the door on the far side of the room from where you entered and be the first out to line up for the ride. Same thing goes for Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster, although those doors are a little more noticeable than the hidden door in the stretching room. Over at Rise of the Resistance, if you want to be the first one off that transport ship and enter the Star Destroyer without anyone blocking your view, keep an eye on Lieutenant Beck. Once you've been caught in the tractor beam and pulled aboard the Star Destroyer, Beck will look toward the door that will open into the hangar. Spoiler alert, it's usually the same one you came in. And once you've been taken to the interrogation chamber in Res the Resistance, stand about midway into the room to be right in front when the Resistance arrives to rescue you. This can happen on either side, depending on what chamber you're in, so keep an eye out for the laser cutting through the wall. The room isn't very wide, so you'll just need to turn. And for the other ride in Galaxy's Edge, it's not so much about standing next to the right door as it is about lining yourself up behind the right number of people. 
The cockpit on the Millennium Falcon seats six, with the first two to enter getting the best positions, the pilot. If you're in a group smaller than six and you end up behind another small group, you'll be put together and end up with the gunner and engineer positions, which can be fun, but certainly not as interactive as the pilot positions. If you haven't succeeded in lining up behind the right number group, you can always ask to wait for the pilot positions in the next group, and usually the cast member will let you wait off to the side. But again, that's never guaranteed, and if it's a super busy, crazy day, don't bug those cast members. All right, next trick only the Disney pros know, use your party ticket to make fast passes. You might already know that you can use your ticket to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party to get into the park three hours before the hard ticket event actually starts. But did you know you can use that ticket to make fast passes? Most nights, the hard ticketed after hours holiday parties will start at 7 p.m., although that ticket gets you access to the park beginning at 4 p.m., and we definitely recommend going early. Party entertainment won't start until the party officially begins and day guests have left the park, but that's three extra hours that you can hop on rides during the regular park day, and we recently found out about a bonus hack. With that party ticket, you can reserve FastPass reservations for the three hours that the park is still open. FastPass isn't available during the party, but this hack lets you jump on a few attractions and skip the lines before the party starts. If you are only attending the party that day, but you have a regular park ticket linked to your account, you'll want to make sure to use the right one when you arrive. When you use your magic band or ticket to scan into the park, you'll want to make sure you're using the party ticket and not a regular day park ticket. The system won't automatically give preference to the party ticket, but they usually have a separate entrance for party guests where you'll get your wristband. Cast members there will make sure the right ticket is being used, but just in case it's something you want to be aware of. Now this is definitely a new pro trick, how to get around the Epcot construction. The construction at Epcot right now is expansive. Seriously, the entire front of the park is construction walls and confusing new walkways. It's like a maze in there. Even we pros are having a little trouble, which is why we want to make sure you know what's going on before you get there. Basically, the entire front of Epcot is getting a massive redesign. Future World is being reconfigured into new neighborhoods, World Discover, World Nature, and World Celebration. There are lots of construction projects. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is well underway in the former Universe of Energy location, and the Play Pavilion is taking shape in the former Wonders of Life Pavilion. In the center of it all, the Fountain of Nations is no more. Mouse Gear is getting a huge redesign, and Club Cool and the former Starbucks are becoming the location of a brand new festival center. So that means lots of construction walls, and you can no longer walk straight under Spaceship Earth to get to World Showcase. Spaceship Earth, by the way, is also due for a long-term closure and massive re no word on if the start date of mid-May will be delayed. So new walkways are clearly listed on the park map and there are plenty of directional signs and cast members to help you get where you need to go. To get to Mission Space, Test Track, the Epcot Experience, Temporary Mouse Gear Location, and the Mexico side of World Showcase, go to the left. The signage is color-coded and you'll be directed toward Future World East's attractions with reds, pinks, and purples. If you're headed towards Soren, the land, the seas, or Journey into Imagination, and the Canada side of World Showcase, head to the right. All of the Future World West signage and walls are designated with blues and greens. To exit the front of the park, just keep following the very large exit signs on all those construction walls. Now, this is definitely something to study up on, how to snag the best fast passes in Hollywood Studios. Epcot isn't the only park with a confusing new system. Studios has had several new rides debut recently, including Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway that just opened on March 4th. And that means the fast pass tiers in that park have gotten yet another shakeup. If you've had trouble understanding the fast pass system in this park, don't worry, it's a bit confusing. With the beginning of Galaxy's Edge last August, a lot of rides, all of them really, besides Star Tours were added to Tier 1 in the park's FastPass system. You can choose only three FastPasses per day in advance, but only one of those picks can be from Tier 1, so you can imagine this change was not so great. You had to pick just one between Slinky Dog Dash, Tower of Terror, Toy Story Mania, Rock and Roller Coaster, you get the idea. But once Millennium Falcon was added to the FastPass system in mid-February, most of the rides went back to Tier 2, meaning you could reserve FastPass for more than one of the park's top attractions in advance. 
Tier 1 in Hollywood Studios is now just Millennium Falcon, Slinky Dog Dash, and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You can choose one of those three and pair it with two Tier 2 picks such as Toy Story Mania and Tower of Terror if you like. Of the three options for Tier 1, we'd advise picking either Slinky Dog Dash or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. They both have longer lines. Then hopping in standby first thing or last thing for whichever you didn't get a fast pass for, and also waiting in standby or using the single rider line for Millennium Falcon since that one typically has a shorter line. Once you've used up your initial three fast passes you scheduled in advance of your park day, you can now reserve a new fast pass one at a time for the rest of the day, as long as fast passes are still available. Keep toggling through the time options in the My Disney Experience app to pull up new fast pass times and rides. People are changing plans all the time and you can often get a last minute fast pass even for those top rides. And our final new trick that only the Disney pros know, use a ride share to get to Hollywood Studios on time. Don't take the Skyliner the day you're trying to get a Rise of the Resistance boarding pass unless you're okay with a little risk. In order to join a boarding group, you have to be inside the gates of Hollywood Studios when it officially opens for the day. That means leaving plenty of time for security and making it through the entrance, which means getting to the park at least 30 minutes ahead of opening. During busy times of the year, that 30 minutes is likely cutting it close too. In order to make sure you don't miss out on a boarding group, we suggest avoiding Disney transportation when you're headed to the park in the morning. The buses should be able to get you there in time in theory, but since there can be unexpected delays in the bus schedule and oftentimes they run a little less frequently that early in the morning, things can get a little dicey. You'll want to show up at the bus stop way early to account for a bus not showing up for about 30 minutes, and then you'll want to factor in transportation time as well. As for the Skyliner, it typically only starts running 30 minutes before the park opens. While the ride is short, delays or long lines could mean you're cutting it pretty close, and don't forget to check the weather. Skyliner doesn't do well on super, super windy days. If you do plan on taking the Skyliner, make sure you're lined up at least 15 to 20 minutes before it opens. Example, if Hollywood Studios opens at 8, the Skyliner will start running at 7.30, so make sure you're in line for the Skyliner no later than 7.15. Overall, we suggest using a rideshare service though, a minivan, or driving yourself to the park to be safe. Once you do get to the park, we also suggest hitting the bag checks to the far left. Only guests coming from the parking lot are coming towards these when they enter the park, whereas everyone getting off buses, boats, and the Skyliner is heading straight towards the security further to the right. Once you're through security, try for the tap styles at the far end. Most people just keep going straight and end up right in the middle. There will often be tap styles open on the very, very, very far are right that are just used first thing in the morning when crowds are their heaviest and few people seem to move all the way down to those. So hopefully those seven new tricks and tips will help you. We are always, always learning new things when we're in the parks. And of course, with all of these openings and all of this construction, all this new stuff going on at Disney World, we are learning even more special tips and unique tricks to make sure that you maximize your time, maximize your money while you are in Walt Disney World for the short amount of vacation that you get. So we're going to keep noting what we learn and sharing it with you guys. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.